Hello, thanks for joining me this morning. I'm, I'm pretending to be on the Newport Bridge. Um, this is how I get out and about at the moment. And um, can you just tell me who you are and what your involvement is with the creative arts in Teesside? Absolutely. Well, I'm Mary Lou Springstead and I'm a painter and um, I have friends in Teesside. I exhibit a little bit. Um, you're, bra you're breaking up a little bit there. So um, what, what kind of paintings do you do? What's your subject kind of? A little bit unstable. Sorry, you're breaking up a little bit, so. I know. Hopefully it'll, it'll reconnect and you can hear me. Well, um, I mainly use acrylic paint. Um, I'd say my influences are expressionism and surrealism and lowbrow art, feminist art. So I kind of explore a wide range of, of subject matter. Um, when I first moved to the area, I was walking around a lot with my partner and I took a lot of photos. So many of the paintings were of places that I saw and then I would incorporate uh, this robot character. And so, uh, but lately I've been working on culture wars. Fantastic, well, it's, it's an important, uh, important place to be right now, isn't it? Yes. Let me, can, can I just, you, you've got a little robot figure, is that what you said? Yes. So, so I'm, I'm intrigued to hear more about that. Well, um, I came to Teesside, to Middlesbrough in 2010, and I went to university at Teesside University. And um, for my final project, got my master's in future design. I did a series of paintings with this little robot character. It's a character that I've been using for quite a few years, but um, people started to refer to me as a robot lady and I still will use it today. I make robot bookmarks and things like that. Kind of is a bit symbolic, you know, of being maybe out of place character. I use like vintage robots. They're not like high tech, like AI or anything like that. But um, for years, the robot was featured. Not as much now. Because I'm an artist, I like to change and do different things, you know. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, that, that's covered. Um, so you, were, you, were you an artist for a long time before you got some formal training? Did you, did you discover art for yourself? Did it something that you did as a kid? Absolutely. In particular, when I was like 16 or 17, I really thought, oh, I, this is what I want to do. I think it was because, um, you know, all the psychological turmoil, it was like a great way to kind of deal with that. I didn't really know like how I would make a living off of it, but I did go on to uni and, and study, getting the bachelor's, what they used to call studio art, you know, back in the early 90s. Yeah, interesting, because I've, I've, you know, pretty much similar path. I've always been engaged with the creative arts, but it was only um, years ago now, seven, eight years ago, that I, I went and got some formal qualifications, again, at Teesside University. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I was interested to know how, how much I didn't know. That was, that was good. And, and how many different approaches to creativity they are, there are. So um, it, it has been a massive help to me as well. Um, and um, do you, are you uh, mainly paint on your own? Do you do any collaborative work with other local artists or printers or anything like that? I mainly paint on my own. Uh, occasionally I'll do some illustration work. Um, I'm, my internet connection is unstable. Hopefully this will get through. Uh, um, I'm quite, um, involved in the writing circle authors here in Middlesbrough and Teesside area. So sometimes I'll illustrate like a poetry chat book I did for, for Joe Colley. So once in a while, if, it, if it's right, 
because I wouldn't say I'm necessarily an illustrator. I find it very challenging. But if the subject matter, you know, resonates with me, then, then I'll do it. And then, of course, anytime you have an exhibition, I mean, you're always working with people. But I do prefer to work alone in the studio when I'm trying to, to paint. I don't really like working in a group of people with like, let's give each other feedback, you know? No, I, I, that can happen afterwards, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I get I'm that. I'm an introvert. Yeah, I feel the same. I mean, it was kind of, it was kind of good in a way at university to be thrust into writing stuff there and then in sharing it because then um, I found I wrote loads more and actually produced a lot more good work. Um, just being put on the spot, if, it, if it's me, I'm I'll agonise over every word as it goes onto the page rather than getting it down and then going back to it. Um, but yeah, I can't have anyone looking over my shoulder while I'm creating. It's far too personal, I think. Um, so I don't, I don't think many people are like that. Well, we, I mean, we're artists, aren't we? So we're all going to be completely different to one another, you know, in our own ways. You know, it's, uh, that's, that's, that's what it's about, isn't it? Finding that, that, that way of creating and expressing that, that works for you. Um, so, um, so what about lockdown? Has that affected your work? I mean, obviously, if you prefer to... Um, work on your own anyway, it maybe hasn't had such an impact on you? Well, to tell you the truth, you know, I, I, I don't make a living off of my art. So I, I have a, a job working as a learning support assistant at the Northern School of Art on the Green Lane campus, right? So when lockdown happened, I had to work from home, which is quite challenging doing learning support. You know, and now it's summer break. So actually being in lockdown has given me more time to work on my art. And it's kind of helped me refocus and read more. And, and um, it's kind of given me a bit of a, a boost, I think. So it's, it's actually been great. I well, mean, you know, it's, it's a terrible situation. So, you know, I haven't always been like the most productive. I mean, even as an introvert and, and Joe, Oh, great, I don't have to go out. This is like, at first I was like, this is wonderful. <laughs> but you have everything going on. So, you know, it's still really heavy, isn't it? So, I mean, it's not like I've completely finished a new body of work, you know, but I've definitely started. <laughs> it's been amazing to see the, the different reactions that people have had. I mean, me personally, I've, I've absolutely, I've found it really um, uh, fulfilling time um, just to be able to take that time out. My, my mate, I also, I've always had a, a proper job, um, but that's completely dried up. So I've had kind of, you know, four months of um, preparing to do this and focusing on, on, you know, my obsession with the cultural ascendancy of Teesside. You know, that's all I'm really interested in. So I've, I've, it's just been great to be able to focus myself entirely on that. A um, little bit of homeschooling, which has made it tricky, but, you know, school's out now so it's you know it's like I feel like my total lockdown has only just begun because you know I haven't got to spend hours homeschooling every day and uh yeah I've hardly written anything but I feel like I'm fully engaged um so I know some people have been in in desperate places I think it's harder for poets more than artists and writers that you know I think poetry kind of needs that instant audience that personal presence, that instant feedback, um, more than perhaps any other art form. Um, so yeah, I do feel, feel bad for the poets, um, but I think the yeah, art we, writers... We had um, a friend who's a musician and he was having a very tough time writing anything, you know, but as a painter, it's been okay. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. Well, it's been great to talk to you. I do want to say about you as well. I just want to say about Teesside, because I was a bit like awkward in the beginning, that, you know, I moved here from Florida. And just real quick, um, I find this area filled with writers, artists, poets, you know, much more than where I came from in the panhandle of Florida. And there's a real creative energy here. And um, I'm enjoying, you know, it's really made my art progress even further. So just want to give a little plug out the T side. 
Absolutely fantastic. I was just, when I was just interviewing Bob before this, saying exactly the same, spent 25 years involved in the creative arts in London and I loved it, you know, completely inspired me. First music and then um, theatre and poetry, um, you know, and then just kind of mix up with cabaret. And I just, I just always been so excited about everything I've seen on Teesside. It's, it's got something, it's got a certain atmosphere that I've not sensed in other places. And perhaps it's because it's been so entirely overlooked um, for so long. Uh, but it's all been bubbling away there. You know, people have been doing these things. It's just, uh, I think we're starting to become conscious of everything that has already been achieved and the potential that we have going forwards. <laughs> have you got anything else that you'd like to say before we leave it? Have a what? Sorry. Uh, no, I just wondered if you, because that, that's probably a great place to end, but I just wondered if there's anything that you wanted to say about your work before before you go. I think, I think we've covered all the questions. Covered it. Brilliant. You know, it's just something that I'm not going to stop doing, making art, so. It's a life's you work, isn't see, it? You see, you know, I'm, I'm in for the long journey. Brilliant. I'm, I'm right there with you, I have to say. Yeah.